Hello, this is Yaakov Kornberg from Jerusalem. We'll be doing another chart tonight in our series of classes on on Cancer Ascendant with the ruling planet, the moon, in the different signs and houses. And tonight we'll be talking about the moon in Sagittarius. It's sort of a difficult combination because here it comes out when the moon is in Sagittarius, it's unconnected to the Ascendant, meaning it falls in one of the bad houses. Uh, in this case, falling in the sixth house, the house of ill health, the house of servitude, the house of uh, of work. And so a person who has the ruling planet in the sixth, he's going to feel, first of all, there's going to be a feeling of uh, insecurity. Maybe he feels like he's not... Um, Uh, he feels like a service mentality more that he feels like he's like you know the nature of a servant when you have the ruling planet in the house of servitude um, and it also makes a person of course a workaholic uh, is one of the uh, significations of the moon in the uh, in the sex they like to work it can cause a certain illness with uh, Again, don't take me wrong, you know, the sixth house that doesn't have to cause illnesses only if it's if it's seriously afflicted. You know, would you would you be more inclined to predict uh, you know, like illnesses or something? And but if not, it indicates more it's like a person who gets involved in governmental work or in medicine. It's you find a lot of people that, you know, careers of service were uh, they want to be servants, you know. So you find people who are mamash, you know, like servants and there were jobs like that. You find a lot of people who work for the government, you know, in service type related jobs, teachers, uh, doctors, a lot of doctors, is, uh, doctors and nurses. You find tremendous amount of them. They have the rulers in the sixth house. Uh, it's uh, right. Only uh, you only go towards illness if there were a lot of bad, if the uh, planet in the the ruling uh, the planet you know in the sixth house was afflicted and in bad zodiacal state and things like that. Uh, tonight, uh, let's see. So, uh, so again, um, when you have the moon in in Sagittarius, he's going to. See the uh, the the cancer wants to fulfill itself through uh, the home, right? That's the cancer in nature. It's attached to the home and the family. But the, but the moon in Sagittarius, Sagittarius is the the sign of long journeys, travel, uh, pie in the sky, high philosophy, science, uh, law, things like that. And so they, they don't really go together. The planet of the family and the planet of travel, they don't go together. Right? The cancer, when he has to travel, he feels sick. He wants to be at home. That's why this uh, uh, Sagittarius rules the sixth house of the, of the cancer. Um, so it, it comes a time, uh, it's always hard to try to merge these two influences uh, and to, to make them into all. Tonight I want to take a look at, uh, let's see, somebody famous who's got this. Um, uh, let's take a look at a chart of a very famous man. Uh, again, one of the most famous men of the 20th century, Albert Einstein. He was Jewish, Jewish. And he was, uh, of course, uh, a great physicist. Uh, discovered, so to speak, the theory of uh, relativity. Made him, uh, people considered him the, you know, the great genius of the 20th century. Changed the way we look at, uh, at least, uh, I don't know the way we look, but the way the you know, big scientists look at the universe. And changed the way people, you know, looked at it. So he was a very important man, and so so let's take a look at his charts. He was a Cancer, so he had the ruling planet in the sixth house. And Bemet, he was he worked for the government in the early part of his life. He was a a patent officer. He again when he was in school, he wasn't very successful at school. Uh, and then he worked as in the patent office uh, when he when he got older. Not a great profession, but governmental, like we talked about before. And but all the time he was working in the, in the, he had a very very powerful uh, 
besides the moon, we'll come back to the moon in a second. Uh, if you look at his chart, you see he had three planets on the very top of the chart. Uh, Mercury right on the 10th house cusp in Aries. An original thinker, right? Aries is a sign of originality. It's the initial first sign of the zodiac, the initial uh, impulse, the creator of uh, new ideas. And it was conjunct with Venus, and uh, Saturn was uh, also there, where he could uh, he had Saturn between the Venus and uh, Mercury, where his uh, ideas could be concretized and and made into a whole theory and he was a very deep thinker right when you have the the mercury conjunct saturn um and if you look at his uh and all of those three planets are trying his uh uh trying his uh his Venus, right? So they all they all really help his Venus. Uh, excuse me. They try in his uh, moon, his ruling planet. So so him and his career they go together, right? He had the moon trying the the Mercury, and uh, the Saturn and uh, the Venus, and besides that, his moon is in in the sign of uh, Sagittarius, which is higher education and. Uh, philosophy and uh, religion um, and so he had, he had Jupiter in the ninth house and so so the moon gave itself up to Jupiter also so it increases the ninth house needs of the moon he had a moon that was very very serious his, his unconscious desires were, were to be drawn towards philosophy and religion and well, in his case, not religion, but in any case, philosophy and higher education, science. Uh, he became a professor, professor, right? He's very attached to the, the academic world. And that's because the dispositor of the moon is in the ninth house. Right? And then, then he had all... And he had all the three planets, and so he had the three planets there in the the tenth house, which gave him a very strong uh, furthered his career. Uh, he had a lot of fire, right? He has the three, four planets in fire. He had a little bit of earth, and he had some. Uh, Interesting, he didn't have much water in here, more much uh, air in his chart. Mm. But he became a super successful man. And he also had his, now that I'm looking at it, he also has his sun. He had four planets in his 10th house. Right? He had the moon, uh, the sun, and Pisces. And then Mercury, Saturn, and Venus in the also in the ten thousand Aries. And so you see, when he had a stellium there in the tenth house of career, he became very, very famous, especially with the Sun there in the tenth house. And the Sun is also connected to Jupiter. Right, the Sun and the Moon are both in the signs of Jupiter, so both his lights gave themselves up to his ninth house to the house of uh, you know deep thought and uh, and philosophy and uh, higher education so you see the connection between his career and 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 uh, and the academic approach to life the scientific approach and I thank everybody for listening